Welcome back everyone. Hope you are doing well. In the last session, we have discussed about the for loops and there are many other loops in the JavaScript as well. So what we are going to do, we are going to go through each and every one in some next sessions. Okay. So for that, I am going to create another folder called loops. And inside loops, I'm going to create a file called loops.html. And inside this HTML file, I'm going to discuss you about all the loops which are present in JavaScript. So let's add the HTML tag and the head tag and the body tag. My mistake about this comma. So I need to add a script over here, and inside it, I'm going to run my JavaScript. So at first, we need to know how many loops are there. So in general, there are four loops, while loop, do while loop. For in loop, for off loop, for each loop, so today we are going to discuss about the for loop and we already used it in the last time but we didn't have explained all the logics behind the for loop. So what is the need of the for loop? Suppose I need let's create a console log at first in this session. So console log. So I'm going to write it for we are learning all. You can write any message over here. So if I just run this one in browser, let's see, in console, we are running for loop. Suppose I need to write this for loop, this console, actually this console for 10 times. What I need to do, I need to just copy and paste it for 10 times. Isn't it? It might be not 10 times because I'm not 10 times correct over here. So it might be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, it's okay. It's 9, but uh, we're clear about this that if I need it the same thing multiple times, then I need to just copy and paste the code again and again. So in this place, the for loop comes into the action. So what is the action of it and how I can write it? For writing the for loop, we will write for and then the parenthesis and inside it, there will be three parameters, okay? So first one is initial expression and we'll end it with a semicolon and second one is condition and third one is increment or decrement okay so this is the main three parameter for for loop and how I can write it for initial expression let's add a variable called pair i and let's start it with zero so actually what is i i is Basically, the short form of index, and as you know, in every loop, the in every uh, JavaScript loops, the loop starts from the zeroth index. So let's every time assign it to the zero until or unless we have some specific conditions. Okay, it might be the some case when we need to start the i from ten or 12 or 5 or whatever you want to but 
In this case, or in any general case, we are going to start it from zero, and I am going to name it i because it is a short form of index. And the second one is condition. And the condition means how many times I want to run this loop. So it will be for 10 times. Okay. So this will be the syntax of it. And again, a semicolon and I am going to increment it. Okay. So let's just console it. And I'm going to console log the same thing we are working with all. Might be the last time I run some different console, but this is quite same because this is only different with the message. If the message is defined in the previous time, just ignore it because you can write whatever message in between the console log. Okay, so let's see what it shows me. So it shows me 10 times the same thing we are working with for loop. Okay, so instead of writing the console log 10 times, we did it by only one for statement and with the parameter. And let's just console every time the i over here. So what I am going to get from the i, so let's just get it. So we are working with for loop. First one is 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. But it is showing me to 10 one. So how it is working? So for the first time, when the loop is starting, it is starting with a 0 one. So at the first time, it's come to this statement and then print this one with the value of i is 0. And after doing this one, the i is going to increment and goes to the second version. Okay. So now the i will be 1. And when the second one occurs, the i will be now 1. And it is going to print with 1. And the third time, it is going to be 3 and so on. As I mentioned 10 will be greater than my i, so it will be when the i will be 9, it will end up and I can see in the last i value is 9 in this case, okay? So this way it works properly with us. What if I told you to print the number from 1 to 10 and how you can going to do it? So just start the loop from 1 and I am going to put an equal sign over here so my i value can be equal to 10 or 10 is greater than or equal to i so that it will print from 1 to 10. So let's see. So it is going to print 1 to 10 and what if I just need only the odd number from 1 to 10. I need to print odd numbers from 1 to 10. Okay. So, for doing the odd number, I know that it, it should be given me this value 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Okay. So, in every case, the divisible value shouldn't be equal to 0. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write if condition and if i divisible by 2 not equal to 0, then it should print with the console log the i value. Okay? So let's see what it shows. So it is showing me 3, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay. We just did that. And what if I need to write the odd numbers from 10 to 1? So in this case, the things will be in the reverse order. For in this case, what I need to do, 
I need to put the I from team and it should be greater than equal to zero and I should be decrement. Let's see what it shows. It shows nine, seven, five, three, and one. So in this way, the for loop works properly with JavaScript. Please let me know if you have any. In this way, for loops works in JavaScript. And if you have any question or any problem regarding the for loop or any other previous course which you have done in previous lesson, please do comment below and subscribe me for next upcoming contents and which is going to be very interesting and we are going to build some awesome projects in the near future. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.